my purpose. My journey was not a straight path, uh, but a very windy and, and zigzaggy path. I'm a pastor now, as I mentioned, but when I was in college, basically my dream job, um, and I don't even think anybody here at Gateway knows this, but my dream job was to work for the UN, the United Nations. I, I studied business and economic policy in college, and, and I was fascinated with international policy organizations like UNICEF, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, et cetera. Later in my journey, um, I started developing interest and affections and career aspirations for a completely different field. Um, and I became passionate about the world of popular culture. Um, I was even aspiring to be a DJ at one point. Um, and yeah, I have a huge affinity for art, music, and and just postmodern culture in general. But eventually I found out that there are other plans for me. And I realized that God had plans for me to, to be a pastor. Uh, he was like, you know, I don't want you to work in international development. I don't want you to be a DJ. I created you to be a pastor. Why do I share all this? Because again, my journey of discovering my purpose um, has not been an easy straight path. And you know, I'm 34 years old. Um, I've taken tons of tests and assessments and talked to tons of career counselors and recruiters and mentors throughout my life. I've read books on, on finding your calling and discovering your career. I've had some very unique jobs. I've lost a job. And, and again, it's not been an easy path to discover my purpose, but it has been an adventure and it has been a journey. And I don't know where each of you are today in your journey of discovering your purpose, um, but Maybe some of you have an idea. Maybe some of you have no clue. Again, I, have no, I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, I just wanted to encourage you by saying that your purpose is not a destination. It's a journey. And by the way, when, when I say your purpose, and you can fill that word in with calling or vocation or whatever term you want to use, your purpose is not limited to or defined by your work. I want to be very loud and clear about that. Your purpose is not limited to your work, your career, your profession, what you do from nine to five or nine to six to gain an income. No, your purpose is so much more than that. Your purpose is who you are as a unique and special individual in this world. And you are a unique and special person that's been created in the image of God for a very special purpose. And just to speak to that, and to set the table, if you will, for our time, um, I just wanted to share a quick excerpt from a book as a way to encourage you and as a blessing over you before our time today. It's from a book called What Color Is Your Parachute? And this is a, from a section of a book called There Will Never Ever Be Another You. So here we go. Cool. Challenges, come to, challenges come in the form of questions. In this case, you know the questions. They aren't new. You've thought of them during some dark night when you just couldn't sleep. Why are you here on earth? What's different about you from anybody else? Why are your fingerprints unlike anyone else's on the face of the earth or in the total course of history? You know the questions and you know the answers. Actually, it's just one answer. And it all comes down to this. The world has never seen anyone quite like you before. And it will never see another you again. And there is something that you have to contribute to this world that the world needs from you. No matter how small or unimportant you may think you are in the grand scheme of things, you were born, you are breathing, you are here because there is something that you have to contribute to the world that the world really, really needs. At least in this place, in this time, with your style, with your character, and your stamp upon it. Someone needs you. Someone's life has been and will be better because of you. Maybe many, many somebodies, be you a healthcare professional or a scientist, an engineer, a teacher, a techie, or a digger of ditches, it does not matter. The world needs all of these things, but animated specifically by your spirit, your brains, your personality beneath and in it all. Your purpose in life isn't just a matter of what kind of work you do. It's a matter of who you are, what kind of person you are, and whether you choose to be the best you that you can possibly be. So just wanted to share that with y'all as we get started today. And now Casey and Kirk are gonna kick us off. 
Awesome. Thank you, John. That was a beautiful excerpt. Um, so my name is Casey. For those who may have missed that little intro, I help serve with um, Anchor at Gateway South. And Kurt and I will be taking on this um, subject of passion, which is a big one. And uh, Kurt is our um, college pastor at South. So he'll be piggyback, piggybacking off of me. So uh, just to, to approach this huge subject of passion, um, I guess I'll start with the definition per Wikipedia, because that's always helpful, right? Um, it's barely, the, a barely controllable emotion. And so um, that's a big topic. and or revealed itself in my life personally. So I'm just gonna be sharing kind of a little anecdote about my journey. Oh, okay, it says my connection is unstable. Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Um, so a little bit about my journey. I grew up in kind of a culture, um, in the envir environment that was very um, encouraging for me to pursue what I love to do. Um, for me to pursue my dreams, um, no matter what it takes to, to do what I love, to be happy. Um, and I think this was compounded in high school when YOLO started being a theme. You only live once. Um, so that definitely uh, compounded that belief for me. So I was like, you know what, whatever I pursue in life, whatever my passions are, like, I just want to have fun. Um, and I felt like I was very heart driven in that. Um, so that resulted in me pursuing um, a career in musical theater. Um, I went to a magnet program in high school and I love the culture, I love the people. I felt like that's where I was supposed to be. Um, so when college time rolled around, that's what my next step was. I didn't really have to give it much thought because it felt right. You know, I, I had fun, I was still having fun. Let's, let's keep on keeping on. Um, however, I, once I actually got into a college in Boston, uh, things definitely changed pretty quickly for me. I started just feeling a little bit more unsettled and uh, I realized how much the lifestyle around musical theater didn't mesh up with much of the logistical part of what I wanted to, um, how I wanted my life to look, how I wanted to build and develop myself. Um, just logistically, a lot of things didn't make sense for me. You know, musical theater, there's a lot of traveling involved. There's a lot of um, inconsistency when it comes to financial stability. You know, when you have a gig, you make money. When you don't, you, you know, you got to have maybe one or two or three jobs to get you by. Um, yeah, and, and a lot of things didn't make sense for me in the short term, term or the long term. My mom actually ended up having a surgery, so I was really far from home. Um, I'm from San Antonio, so it's a, a, a long trip. And so some of the reasons may have been shallow, some of the reasons were practical, but I just realized that that wasn't really where I was supposed to be going from there on. Um, and so uh, for me as a person of faith, I kind of took it to God and I went back to the drawing board. Like, okay, where should I go from here, God? Like, what should I do from here on out? And this resulted in me swinging the opposite direction. So before I was super heart centered. I was like, I just want to have fun, thinking with my heart and my gut. And then it swung the other way of thinking with my mind. And I was like, okay, what logistically makes sense for me? Before it didn't care. I, I didn't care if it made sense. I just want to have fun. Now um, I want to focus on what makes sense. So now I'm thinking in a checklist format, like, okay, I want to be closer to home, uh, Austin, close to San Antonio, close enough, not, not too far, not too close. So I was like, okay, Austin makes sense. Um, let me get a degree. You know, that's kind of what the world has projected onto me of being successful is getting a degree. I wanted st a stable income. Okay. I'm going to go to college, get a degree, do that. Cause that's what I've been told. Um, I'm like, that seems safe and comfortable and it makes sense for me. Um, and then with my field, I was like, well, I do, I do still kind of want to enjoy what I want to do, um, what I choose to, to pursue. So it's like, psychology seems good, like a catch-all. I like people. I like helping. It just makes sense. Did I love it? Uh, did it drive me, this field of psychology? Not necessarily, but it made sense for me. So um, fast forward, I got my BA in psychology. And along that journey, I do feel like that's where I was supposed to be, just as a precursor. However, I had another pivotal moment post-college when I was applying for PhD programs. And so I spent a weekend applying um, or interviewing at PhD programs. But of course, 
uh, with the hundreds of thousands of, of dollars and six to eight years on the line, um, you're naturally going to reevaluate um, where you're at. So once again, I started unpacking and reevaluating, like, is this the next step? And I just did not, before you're going to invest that much, you really have to be sure. And I wasn't. Um, luckily, at that season of my life, I was reading a book. It's called A Cure for the Common Life by Max Lucado. And I highly recommend it. It is a faith-based book, but um, I honestly, I'd recommend it to everybody because it is filled, jam-packed with tools and real application things that you can do tomorrow if you wanted. Um, also, a side note, I was not much of a reader at that time. Um, and so it's really good because it catches you really initially. You start learning things in the first couple of pages. So even if you don't make it past the first chapter, you learn a lot. So I was lucky in that season to get so much out of it so quickly. And what this book did for me, and I hope that there's a morsel of this that can help y'all or speak to y'all wherever y'all are at in your journey. Um, a lot of what I took out of it was it had me analyze myself um, my passions and my joys from a uh, from my childhood perspective and I think it's easy for us in today's world to look at ourselves as the most realized versions of ourselves today like today is the most realized version of myself because I've I have the most life experiences I've ever had I have the most wisdom the most um, <clears throat> the most uh, life experience to make me, you know, this fully realized person, right? Or, or the most fully realized we've been up until this point. Um, and, but what this book does is it really, for me, it showed me that if anything, the purest version of myself is that childhood phase before the world started speaking into me what my life should look like. conventional ways of thinking of you have to have a degree to be successful um, or you have to just love it just love it and have fun and nothing else matters um, so for me in doing that inventory I um, what I found were my passions on this topic of what a passion is or how to pursue your passions um, th the things that I found in my inventory were things that gave me a deeper sense of fulfillment and purpose than something that may have just been fun um, and I know that we'll get into uniqueness here in a bit, so I don't want to get too much into that, but a lot of those things were things unique to me, things that um, stood out. It wasn't just like enjoying recess. It was something that really gave me a deeper sense of fulfillment and purpose. And as I inventoried those things personally, in my experience, I started recognizing different themes um, and different patterns of these moments. It could be a small moment. Like one of mine that was really, really important and pivotal for me was when I remembered starting my first business. Um, at eight years old, I created a pet sitting business, a little clip art business cards. And for me, I didn't even remember that happening. Um, I didn't even remember that moment. But as I see in my child the things that I explored and I was really into and passionate about um, as a child, I recognized different behaviors and different um, needed to take more seriously in my adulthood um, that I may have never even considered before. So, um, and that also links in with that original definition of um, passion being something that a barely controllable emotion. When I look back, there were moments that intentionally pursuing these things. Naturally, they're coming up in my life in patterns without me pursuing them head on. Um, so I thought that was really important to, to dive into in my adulthood to bring that back around. So, um, <clears throat> essentially, so the, the last point that I want to make is when I look back at my life, I imagine, um, um, learning a lot of, uh, a lot of different directions being pulled in different. Um, looking back, even my high school experience as maybe a waste of time or, or heading in the wrong direction. Like, wow, you went to college, you moved to Boston uh, for a career you didn't do anything with, you know, that you basically ended four months after that. Or, wow, you got a degree, you spent all that time and money in a field that you did nothing with that degree. 
And for me, uh, in my journey, I realized that, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's very easy to look back and feel like you should have known, um, which is, it, it's funny to say, like, right now I'm an events coordinator and I'm in the process of starting my own business. My dad was an entrepreneur and my mom is a corporate events planner. So if anybody has that hindsight moment of like, wow, I, I should have known this sooner, it's definitely. Um, however, a person of faith, I recognize that you only know you can make decisions on the information you're given in that moment. Whatever you know right now, whatever you're processing through right now, that's what's going to take you into the next step. So it's easy for me to say I should have known. But um, when those moments I made decisions based on my heart and my mind and for me as a person of faith, um, pursuing God and what he wanted, I truly believe in my heart of hearts, that is exactly where I was supposed to be to develop into the person that I am and that I'm still becoming. So I just wanted to. Being, going in all different kinds of directions or things not looking like you necessarily expected them to. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, um, I would just encourage everybody to recognize that, um, especially those who are people of faith, like God is not a God of de destination. He's a um, process and a, a God of journey. And as long as we are being intentional and in seeking out the cool things and unique um, areas of our life, lives you know be revealed in time and in ways you may have not expected but um you know, god is in control manifest and and really amazed if we're intentional about it so that is all i have to share thank you for listening i'm gonna hand it over to kurt awesome thanks casey um yeah it's thanks for sharing your story and and passion is discovering your passion is huge and so we're gonna kind of all just lightly deconstruct some ideas we can pull from her story and then um, try, to, try to talk about maybe some practical steps with figuring this out and moving forward because we always need some steps forward, right? Um, but I really, uh, this imagery she used of being on, on this journey, uh, um, searching for your passion, like you're searching for what you enjoy, what gives you life, what's fulfilling, I think it's really important uh, instead of seeing it as like a passion hunt, as a passion, uh, you know, grind, uh, to really see it as a fulfilling and joyful adventure, no matter the stage. Because um, when you're in that adventure for passion, it's really important to be present in it and know you're where you're meant to be. Um, I have this quote, I, I don't know, I can't remember where I heard it. Um, I would love to take credit for it, but I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, it's this idea of let's let's be present and just just sink into that and be present like your future is disappointed and how much more you have to do, how much more of the journey there still is, but also that your past is amazed by how far you come. And so kind of with that in mind, we're kind of setting that stage, uh, just some questions to take home and really think about as we discover our passion. Uh, it sounds real basic, but it's something to sit in, is what do you enjoy doing, right? What brings you life? And, and kind of in that line of thought, it's, it's huge, as Casey shared from the Max Cicado book, to look back and just recognize those moments before these expectations the world put over you. And to really just think about those questions, like what do you enjoy doing? what brings you life um i'm not i am not much of a journaler my wife is but it really helps as you're uh thinking through those processes those feelings those dreams to write it out to even and journal uh it's just a practical way to kind of put it on paper because sometimes you just need to get it out and it makes sense um and another thing just something i've just learned in discovering your passion um, you know, maybe you're in a job you're not thrilled about. Maybe you're doing a degree you're not thrilled about. Um, and that's okay. But part of passion isn't, isn't just, a, is, it's a noun, but it's, it's also a verb. And it's, it's a way that we love, you know, where we're at and what we're doing. And so if you're not, if you're not loving what you're doing, you know, either stop doing it 
or put your heart into it. And, and with that, again, the idea of passion is a verb. Um, let's put passion into everything you touch. Um, so yeah, just some, I know it's a lot of, a lot of catchphrases, a lot of, of big words, but um, kind of with that, um, if you're kind of looking for more resources, we do have resources. I know um, Eric does have his own website that can help uh, with advancing and finding your purpose. I think it's ericbryant.org. Um, and kind of with that further ado, uh, we'll kind of move to our next section, discerning uniqueness. And um, Ross is gonna go ahead and leave that one for you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Casey. Super excited to be here with you all tonight. If we've never met before, my name is Ross. I'm on our North Anchor team, so I get to hang out with the North 20s and 30s. Um, I'm a pastoral resident at Gateway, and also just super excited to talk about discerning uniqueness. Um, this is something that's really, really relevant in my story, and so I'm excited to kind of share it with you guys. Um, I'm going to start by doing exactly that just sharing a little bit of my story with y'all some of you guys have heard me share some of these things but i'm not originally from texas i moved here from colorado five years ago for an engineering job so i studied mechanical engineering up in colorado got my degree about three months later i moved to austin for a job at a giant global tech firm i was helping some of our clients on projects anything from you know college lab projects to partnering with spacex to literally launch teslas into outer space and so i've seen a lot um and and what's relevant about all that is i reflect on that time as a young engineer and I remember as soon as I joined my company, you know, I'm 22 years old, I'm straight out of college. Um, I'm just trying to fit in. I'm just trying to fit in. I'm trying to make friends. And in a highly, highly competitive tech company, like where I worked, it quickly became apparent to me that the way you fit in was by being really great at your job. And when I say really great, I mean really great. Um, if you are in the corporate, fear, you probably know a little bit about what that feels like, right? Constantly trying to prove yourself to your manager, to your bosses, to your boss's bosses. Um, everything that was unique about me that I would discover in the next few years on a journey, um, I was trying to kind of round off of those edges because everything that was unique about me didn't really fit into this fast paced corporate tech environment, but I had studied engineering. And so I thought that's where I was supposed to be, right? Um, it wasn't until maybe a year or two later that I, I encountered a mentor. Um, I started serving with some of the young adults, um, found uh, a mentor figure, and I'll never forget one, interac one interaction we had together. Um, I was just sharing kind of my frustrations um, with essentially trying to round off those corners, trying to fit in, trying to carve off everything that made me me. Um, and, and she said this to me, and I'll never forget it. She said, Ross, no one benefits from you playing small. She said, no one benefits from you playing small. And I realized in that moment, oh my, trying to be everyone but myself. And whether I'd been told that, whether I told myself that, um, that was just my reality. And so that kind of kicked off a, a journey for me, a journey of exploring, okay, um, I've gone so long trying to figure out who I'm not and fit in. Um, what would it look like for me to dedicate timing out who I am. And so um, course of many conversations is a course of many hard, difficult decisions. I ended up leaving that job in engineering. I went into full-time ministry as a person of faith. I felt like that's where God was leading me. That sounds crazy. Um, it is a little bit crazy. I'll level with you. It is a little bit crazy. Um, but I want to share with you guys just some practical things that kind of helped me navigate that journey? What were some of the questions that people asked me? What were some of the exercises um, that I was encouraged to work through? And so I'm going to share some of those with you guys here. And then we're going to actually, because it's a workshop, we're actually going to break into some small groups and just kind of kick around some dialogue. So I'll get to that in a minute. I want to share with you guys just some practical things that I worked through. Um, a question that I considered, um, people kind of asked me to consider it in reality. I didn't come up with this on my own. Um, the question goes like this, what are your personal values? What would your personal mission statement be? And this is kind of where you get to think like you are your own 
organization, right? Pretend you're the CEO of your own organization. What would your organization's mission statement be? What would your organization's values be, right? If this is Ross and graded, what are we putting in our hallway, right? What do we want people to see to be true about who we are? That's going to indicate a lot about your uniqueness. It's the things you find important. Second question I got asked. What kinds of problems or challenges do you, Ross, like working on? Do they involve launching rockets with Teslas? Do they involve working with people? Involve cause-oriented objectives? Do they involve task-oriented objectives? Think back to high school, think back to college or other careers you've been a part of. What problems did you like solving? Um, the flip side of that would be what problems did you absolutely not like? working on. That's going to point you in the direction of uniqueness. Um, a few more practical things to kind of leave you guys with. It's really important that as we're looking for what makes us us, that we're getting really clear on who we are. And notice I didn't say we're not getting clear on who we aren't. We're getting clear on who we are. We're playing to our strengths. Unpopular opinion, but I'm a huge Patriots fan. Um, Maybe I'm more of a Tom Brady fan um, now that he's in Florida. So see how that goes. But Tom Brady cannot run the football. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just trust me when I say that Tom Brady, he's old. He can't run the football. So you don't see him trying to run the football every football game. He plays to his strengths. He throws it. He relies on experience. He passes it to his receivers that he knows can make the plays. The point is, I don't want to spend a lot of time and effort focusing on everything that I'm not good at. I want to focus on the things that I am good at, the things that are valuable to me, the things that make me me, right? And so a couple ways you can do that. If you've heard of the Gallup Strengths Finder, Gallup Strengths Finder 2.0, you can go to Amazon, get up for like 20 bucks. They'll send you a little book. You take a test and it'll give you some of your strengths. Um, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. And it's going to start speaking to your uniqueness right? I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Maybe of personality assessments like the Enneagram, or Myers-Briggs, um, Truity.com, Truity.com has a great initial assessment that you can take for free. It's going to tell you a little bit about who you are. And right now you might be listening to me and be like, Ross, I hate personality tests. They put me in a box. I don't like them. Um, I get it. I really do get it. Um, it kind of reminds me of if you're a, a Pirates of the Caribbean fan in, in the third movie that is made up of a bunch of concentric circles and they have to like rotate the circle to get the map to line up, right? No single piece of the map shows them really anything of value, maybe a little bit, but it's only after they rotate all the pieces that they basically find like the edge of the world or whatever it is that they find. Um, that's kind of how the personality tests are, quite honestly. Um, the Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, Strengths Finder, they're all going to give you a little bit of the map. My encouragement to you would be what really makes you unique, find a few of those tests. The three I mentioned are awesome um, because you can start to get a full faceted picture of what makes you more unique else who might take the same test. Um, finally, seek input from other people. The people in your life that can share with you, hey, this is what I see in you, Ross. This is what I see being unique about you. I'll give you an example. If you're feeling really brave and you take the Strengths Finder test, um, you can find your website. They have for every strength, they have a what they call a balcony and a basement. I think I'm getting some feedback. I don't know if you guys hear that. Anyway, Strengths Finder, they have balcony and basement. Basically, balcony is you like operating in the fullness of that strength. Basement is you like in the basement of that strength. It's not good. Um, for example, one of my strengths is called deliberative. The balcony means I'm earning, I identify risk, I'm a good decision maker, and I plan for the unexpected. If I'm operating in the basement, I'm aloof and disconnected from others. I'm overly cautious, slow, and afraid to act. I've seen both in my life. Um, thing I did when I was trying to discover my uniqueness was I printed out my strengths. I printed out those words, associate and basement. And I took that to some of my trusted friends and mentors and colleagues. And I say, hey, on a scale of one to 10, how do you see me showing up? 10 being balcony, one being basement. This is you discovering your uniqueness 
and then discovering how you're actually showing up in that uniqueness. Because knowing what's unique about you is important, but understanding, okay, how do I bring this uniqueness to my job, to my spheres of influence? That's the next level stuff. So again, if you're feeling, um, you might try something similar. So I have some questions for us. I can post those in the chat. Like I said, um, in true workshop form, let's talk talk about some kind of get some ideas flowing. So I'm going to post those in the chat questions like this. When have you received someone's affirmation? What were you doing? Right? What kinds of, we kind of talked about that. And then again, what value of yours? So I think Eric is the man in charge. <laughs> 